Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. My name is Luke and I do perfume reviews. If you're new here, please consider subscribing, like my video, leave a comment if you wish to. I always respond. If you happen to be a regular subscriber of mine, welcome back. I appreciate you and I just wanted to say that I thank you all for so many nice comments that I get on a daily basis. So many of you are incredibly kind and I just love reading the, your comments and interacting with you. It's one of my favourite things and it always makes my day. So today I have some extra time and I decided to film a couple of videos and the first one I'm doing is a video about vanilla fragrances and I know you're probably all sick and tired of vanilla because, you know, everyone is talking about vanilla fragrances uh, during this time of year. However, vanilla is one of my absolute favourite notes and I've been using vanilla fragrances ever since. And I think the, one of the first fragrances that I bought with my own money was Givenchy Pie. It's a men's fragrance and it's just a beautiful vanilla, tonka, a bit aromatic. But I don't have it anymore, so I won't really talk about it. I'll just talk about the ones that I have in my collection. So let's get into it. Let's start with the first one, which is Manifesto from Yves Saint Laurent, released in 2012. And this is your typical sweet, powdery vanilla scent. There's a hint of fruitiness in the opening and it also opens very green. The name Manifesto doesn't really match with the perfume because this is not a beast mode scent that makes a statement. It wears quite close to the skin in my opinion. The longevity is good. It lasts all day and even though this is a sort of a modern designer perfume, it's among the more original, unique designer perfumes, in my opinion. I don't find it too generic or overly sweet. You get the green notes, some black currant, jasmine and a woody vanilla base. The dry down is sweet, woody, powdery. It's sweet, but it's also classy. Yet it's not particularly expensive smelling. It's warm and comforting. It's just perfect for an everyday perfume. It can also be worn on a night out. I think it's very versatile. You can wear it anywhere, anytime, any occasion. It will work. Next up, we've got Hypnos from Lancome, which is another vanilla scent. And this one is from 2005. This is a sweet and sour vanilla with a very unique passion flower note. It smells like a vanilla custard or a vanilla pudding, but not in a gourmand way. This is one that isn't too sweet for me, even though it is sweet. And as you know, I absolutely despise scents like black opium and other sickly sweet perfumes. Uh, this is not that. I've talked about it before, so I'll just keep it short and move on. Next up, we've got three perfumes from Dior. Hypnotic Poison is a flanker of the original poison and it's one of the perfumes that pioneered the gourmand trend in the late 1990s. It's incredibly popular and I'm sure everyone knows what it smells like. The vanilla in here is a rich, deep bourbon vanilla. It's very complex and so is the vanilla in the next fragrance in Dior Addict. The vanilla that Dior uses in these fragrances is not your regular cheap smelling vanilla. No, the vanilla in Dior Addict is rich, it's dark, boozy, yet still sweet and almost mouth-watering. In Dior Addict you also get some jasmine as well as a sandalwood and tonka base. It's a cult classic from 2002 and most people absolutely love this scent and so do I. My bottle is not vintage, this is a new bottle, however I have to say this is a still a substantial fragrance. The performance is amazing. It definitely wasn't when I bought it. It needed a couple of months to macerate and now the liquid is a dark brown colour and it's absolutely stunning. The juice has got very potent. So that was Dior Addict and now I'm moving on to Dior J'adore Le Or from 2017. 
Uh, this is a 2017 version, but there's also a 2010 version, which is also amazing. Unfortunately, it has been reformulated this year by the new Dior in-house perfumer, Francis Kurdijan. So I don't think this new version, this new formula, has anything to do with this version, which I'm showing you here, which is a beautiful, luxurious smelling white floral vanilla with a hint of amber and some tonka bean in the base. It was created by master perfumer François de Marchi, who used a very high-end type of vanilla sourced from Tahiti, and he also used a bunch of other very expensive high-end ingredients, um, extracts sourced from grass, France. So Dior J'adore l'or is very high-end, very expensive smelling, elegant, sophisticated. It smells like a million dollars, it really does. And I always speak very highly of this perfume because it's an absolute masterpiece. Thankfully, I have a backup bottle and it's such a shame they discontinued it. I remember buying my first bottle in France when I went to France in 2017, I think, and I bought the new version, which was amazing, and I paid 130 euros for it. It was incredibly expensive. And I'm, I'm showing you the box here. So you can see how, what a high-end fragrance this is. Next up, we've got Cashmere from Chopin. And I've talked about it on my channel before, and I, I even showed an empty bottle once because I'd run out of it. I've since repurchased it, and this bottle, I think, smells even better than the one I had before. And it did come in a different box, so it might be a different batch or maybe produced by a different company. My previous one was Coty, and this one is, I think, I'm not even sure, I'll put it on the screen. Casimir is a fruity oriental vanilla scent with a balsamic base. It's a sweet vintage scent from the early 90s. It is a little vintage smelling, but it's still mass appealing in my opinion. You get lots of peach, apricot, flor some florals, vanilla, benzoin, sandalwood, patchouli. It definitely smells more expensive than it is. It performs moderately, but it's quite long lasting. And I absolutely love the bottle. It draws inspiration from Indian architecture, while the name takes you to Kashmir, a region in the north of India. And I know some people would argue that this might be cultural appropriation, but I believe it's inspiration. I don't think there's anything wrong with being inspired by something that's beautiful, be it art, be it literature, be it perfume. The next fragrance I've got here is Libre from Yves Saint Laurent. And this one came out in 2019. And this is a floral vanilla with, uh, with some lavender in the opening. And I don't even know why I decided to include it in this video. Because this is a fragrance that I intend to declutter because it didn't work for me. I bought it on a secondhand website because I, it, it was really cheap. And I did try it and it's not for me. It's just too sweet for me. And I don't really like the combination of that overly sweet orange blossom and vanilla. And it's, it's just not my kind of fragrance. So I think it's best if I move on. The next fragrance is Absolute Aphrodisiac from Inicio, which is a very expensive French niche brand. And this is just an 8ml, and this fragrance is also a vanilla scent. It has an animalic twist, which is nothing like those vintage animalic perfumes. It just adds a hint of sexiness. This is still a cakey, sugary vanilla. It smells almost edible. The performance is moderate. It smells incredible, but for the 200-something euros this costs, I expected a bit more, to be honest. I am happy with this decant for now, and I, I do use it sparingly because I, I do really like this, the scent, but the performance is just not great, you know. It, it should perform like a beast. For 200 euros, it should perform like a beast. And I'm not even sure if you can get this in the UK. I don't think you can. The next perfume that I've also only got a sample of 
is Gentle Fluidity Gold from MFK. So this is the brand I was talking about before. And this is just a very nice spicy vanilla. It doesn't smell awfully unique. I've smelled things like this before, but it does have a very nice juniper berries note. But it, it's just a warm, comforting, powdery vanilla fragrance. I really like to use it from time to time, but it's not one I would need a full bottle of. As I'm filming this, I'm reading those pros and cons that you can find on Fragrantica if you go to a specific page for a specific perfume. And I think they are generated by artificial intelligence. And honestly, these don't make any sense at all. Um, I don't know. I just prefer to read perfume reviews or listen to perfume reviews because I really like, I really want, I, I want to hear, you know, the human perspective, not the AI perspective. Because let's face it, the world is going in a very strange direction. But that's a topic for another day. So that was all from me for today. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please leave a comment. Let me know if you like any of these fragrances, if you own any of these fragrances, if you hate any of these fragrances, it doesn't matter. Thank you for watching. Bye.